The Goliath bird-eating tarantula is a feared spider for good reason. It has a leg span of 11 inches and weighs over six ounces. It's so big, it feasts on mice and even birds. This is the fishing spider. This spiky-legged spider haunts fish pond residents the world over. Its good looks are enough to scare you to death. But it's its legs that are truly freaky. This bizarre arachnid not only walks on water, it can read the underwater world with its legs. Millions of tiny spikes detect vibrations on the water's surface. It can accurately judge where the movement is coming from, and even what prey item it is. A male lives in this section of the pond. And it's full of food. His back legs anchor him to the shore, while his superpowered feet get to work. Every little vibration is assessed. The fish was just out of reach. Walking on water is one thing, but this incredible spider can also breathe underwater. The waterproof hairs around the spider's abdomen create an air bubble. Its lungs look like the stacked pages of a book and draw the oxygen from the bubble. This incredible adaptation allows the fishing spider to breathe underwater. The fish may have been scared out of the spider's hunting zone, but now they're in the shallows. The fishing spider injects paralyzing venom into the fish, which slowly turns its insides into a nutritious soup. This prize catch is something worth bragging about. For 400 million years, this tiny caterpillar-like animal has lived in the shadows. As a result, velvet worms are almost impossible to find and have rarely been studied. Legs with retractable claws run the length of their bodies, all four inches of them, which help them to cling to branches. Their skin is waterproof, useful in the moist depths of the rainforest. But the strangest thing about the velvet worm is the way it attacks is more like something out of a Spider-Man comic than the natural world. It's a deadly underworld predator, and this one has picked up the presence of a beetle. Soon, it's close enough to deploy its most deadly weapon. To the side of its antenna are two modified legs called oral tubes. Connected to these oral tubes are a pair of large slime glands, so large that they account for over 10% of the velvet worm's body mass. Muscles contract around the glands, shooting a sticky slime out of its oral tubes, aiming for the beetle. The hunter may be slow, but the glue spurts out fast. 
Of course, it doesn't always hit the bullseye on the first try. The velvet worm has plenty of splunk. Almost as soon as the goo hits the beetle, it starts to harden. And the prey is held fast. Now all that remains is for the velvet worm to rip off pieces of the unlucky bug, soften them up with digestive saliva, and then down the hatch. Or whatever passes for the hatch in a velvet worm. A young hornet queen who survived the winter has found a suitable tree hole to start a new colony. She must start from scratch single-handedly, build the nest, forage for food, lay the eggs, feed her growing larvae. It's a round-the-clock job. And it lasts for weeks. Finally, 14 days after laying her first egg, the hard work pays off. Returning to the nest with food, she finds her first hatchling, which immediately starts looking after its sibling larvae. Now, the queen has a nanny in the nursery. She's still the breadwinner, bringing food she pre-chews for the infants. But they both share feeding duties. A few days later, she gets a second helper. There are many hungry mouths to feed. Two or three days after they pupate, new workers will join the hunt for food. With a leg span of over 10 inches, they're the size of dinner plates. The giant huntsman was only discovered in 2001. Each trip reveals new findings about this spider species. This female is waiting for her next meal to cross her path. She hasn't moved a muscle for more than three hours. Although her eyesight is good, she also detects prey through vibrations. She knows the cricket is there, but it isn't close enough for a strike. She needs to change tactics. Giant huntsmen rely on strength, speed, and their size. She repositions herself facing down towards the cave floor. Another cricket appears out of the gloom. She feels it approaching. Each limb is a highly sensitive sensory organ that can detect the tiniest vibrations across the rock. Crushing mandibles tear immediately into the cricket and the spider injects its paralyzing venom. Communal spider's nests. Using the thicket as scaffolding, these can house more than a hundred individuals living in small chambers. These huge webs are designed for one key purpose. They are hunting traps. A snared grasshopper struggles to free itself. It's not long before the vibrations spur the spiders to action. 
The grasshopper has powerful legs and needs to be subdued urgently, or it may escape. Reinforcements quickly arrive. It's too late. The struggle is over. Venom immobilizes the grasshopper and starts to digest its body. Group hunting is rare in spiders, but measuring just half an inch long, this species relies on cooperation to take down prey. The body is moved into the safety of a nesting chamber where the feast will begin. Meet Scolopendra. This is the one to be feared most. But it's not the only top predator here. This red claw scorpion from Tanzania is not as fast or as agile, but its powerful pincers and sting make it every bit as deadly. Scorpions and centipedes are competitors. They hunt the same prey. And in the same territory. And because of that, if they meet, they fight. Scolopendra uses all its strength to try and get under Red Claw's armor, but the scorpion's defenses are too strong. It's not Red Claw's attack that wins the day, it's Scolopendra's weak defense that loses it. If you can't defend yourself, you're not likely to stay alive for long in the micro-world. It's the only arachnid known to live exclusively underwater. It has no fins or gills. But this amazing spider doesn't need them. It builds its very own submarine air supply. This bubble is its lifeline, its homemade scuba tank. To construct the bubble, this male swims to the surface and pops his butt into the air. Like the fishing spider, the air bubble around his abdomen allows him to breathe through his book lungs. This odd, crab-like swimmer collects several bubbles from the surface to create a large reservoir of oxygen. This is the spider's sanctuary, where it will feed and rest. Thanks to evolution, it has been given the tools to conquer an entire ecosystem. Spring is still a long way off, but it only takes the faintest hint of warmth for snowdrops and crocuses to bloom. The tiny hike in temperature is enough for life to start stirring underground brown dots appear in the earwig's eggs. A shell bursts open, and a baby earwig struggles to emerge.
The brown dots are the eyes. Like the dragonfly, the larva is called a nymph, a poetic name for a larva that already resembles its imposing parents. It's still quite transparent. But with every casting of its skin, it will look more and more like its mother. Their shells quickly grow darker. Late hatchers need to get a move on. Because what looks like a harmless ball game actually has murderous intent. Hungry earwig nymphs are trying to crack the shells and eat their sibling. Those who succeed get a meal and calories that could make the difference between life and death. A spider wasp. The wasp feeds on pollen and nectar, but she hunts as well, and wolf spiders are a favorite quarry. is relentless. The spider can run, but it cannot hide. With one venomous bite, the wasp renders the spider immobile. It's alive, but no longer kicking. While its zombified victim awaits its fate, the wasp prepares a true chamber of horrors. She'll drag the paralyzed spider into the hole, lay a single egg on her victim's abdomen, then seal up the entrance. When the egg hatches, the young wasp will feed on the zombie spider. But there's a wrinkle in her plan. Ants have spotted the paralyzed spider, and they have hungry little mouths to feed back in their own nest. The spider wasp's underground nursery is finally complete, but she's too late to stop the thieves. Spider wasp searches frantically for the missing spider. She's so agitated, she makes a fatal misstep. The hunter becomes the hunted. Sucked into the lair of the antlion as one brute finishes off another. This behemoth is the subject of myth and legend, with only a few having ever been seen in the wild. The Goliath bird-eating tarantula is a feared spider for good reason. It has a leg span of 11 inches and weighs over six ounces. It's so big, it feasts on mice and even birds. Retractable claws help the Goliath climb up any surface. When the day draws to an end, the jungle comes alive. and almost everything is on the Goliath's menu.
Its eyes are small and ill-equipped for nighttime hunting. So it relies on its most fine-tuned sense, touch. Thousands of hairs along its body allow it to detect prey by feeling for vibrations. Just ahead is a gecko. The reptile seems unaware that it's just inches away from the world's biggest spider. As the Goliath's enormous fangs sink into the gecko, paralyzing venom is injected into its bloodstream. Very quickly, the gecko's organs shut down, and the venom's enzymes start digesting it from the inside out. It's a gruesome way to die. But then again, the most fearsome spider in the world wouldn't have it any other way.